Hi, welcome to Opera McGill's production of A Midsummer Night's Dream and the second intermission. Uh, we've just completed Act Two of Benjamin Britten's A Midsummer Night's Dream. I'm here on stage for the first time doing our first live interview um, during this intermission. I hope all of you have been enjoying it out there on the World Wide Web. Uh, we have uh, people watching from as far away as Turkey. We have some people we know in Iowa. We have some people over in um, Saskatoon. So uh, welcome. With me tonight is Nicola Bowie, who is the choreographer for tonight's show. And we've been enjoying the choreography so far. Um, Nicola, you. first of all, welcome to Montreal. Thank you. Uh, this is not your first visit. You were here a number of years ago doing some master classes Absolutely. in movement. But uh, Nicola Bowie um, is not just a choreographer. She's also a stage director. And in fact, she will be returning to Montreal and to Opera McGill in March to direct I Capuletti e Montecchi, which is an opera by Bellini, uh, The Capulets and the Montagues, which is also a Shakespeare-themed piece. And uh, um, Nicola, how have you found your time here at McGill? I've thoroughly enjoyed my time, Patrick, I have to say, working with Patrick, who is an old colleague from Umagas Opera, and also Andrew Bizantz, who is the maestro on this production, has been an absolute delight, not to mention the hugely talented students that you have here. Well, the, the students are talented here at McGill at the Schulich School of Music. Um, however, you have worked very hard to whip them into shape, yes? I have worked very hard. Yeah. They've been very open and very eager and yeah. very key. And that's really half the battle, frankly. Well, a lot of times you, you work with professional dancers. I do. Um, and, and, but most of the time you're really working with opera singers. Is there, what is the difference with working with an opera singer in an opera to create movement? Like, for instance, you've choreographed many Zalames and dances mm -hmm. of, um, of the Vales, but as opposed to working with a professional dancer in an operatic setting. Well, obviously, it's uh, similar to working with a normal person, a man from the street. There are some who are very physically aware and um, have really very little difficulty in physical movement and others who find it a little more challenging. And so one needs great patience. And I think one needs to understand the limitations of people who do have those challenges and find movements and ways of helping them get the confidence in order to execute the steps. Well, and you're so. really good at it, I must, I must say. Um, coming up in Act 3, uh, during the play within the play of Pyramus and Thisbe, if you've done your homework, you know what's coming up. Um, that Pyramus and Thisbe, at the end of the play, um, they ask if they want to, if the Duke Theseus and Hippolyta uh, want to hear the epilogue or watch a Bergamasque dance. And they actually call for the Bergamasque dance. And it's very involved. It's a lot of music that Benjamin Britten wrote. And my task as the director to you was create a Bergamasque dance that fit the rustics and their characters, but also fit the music. Mm -hmm. uh, what was that challenge like? Well, Benjamin Britten's music is complicated, I have <laughs> yes. to say. So half the battle for me was actually making sure in my mind what the music, how the music went yeah. in order to then fit the steps and not to make it again too complicated, but to make it look like it's an improvised dance that these rustics are doing. Um, and I think that we've achieved that. Uh, I think so too. Yes. It's one of my favorite parts of the opera now. Um, and uh, when, when I chose... Uh, a Midsummer Night's Dream. The, one of the first things I, I said to myself was, I, I can't, I can't choreograph this. This is beyond me. Um, now I am a former dancer, as you know. Indeed. The first person I thought of was you. Um, not only because you're a wonderful choreographer, but you are also a stage director. Mm -hmm. And as somebody who comes to stage direction from the music and from uh, being a conductor, mm -hmm. um, because I also am a conductor. I wanted somebody who had an eye for the stage, and you certainly have that. Um, which do you prefer? Do you prefer being a stage director or a choreographer? I enjoy both, yeah. but what I do enjoy most about being a choreographer in opera is telling a story. Um, quite often, if you're just chore or choreographing dance, you're not telling a story. It's an abstract situation, oh, but yeah. I enjoy... Yeah. The telling of the story and I think um, the choreographer feeds the stage director and vice versa in that yeah. situation. And, well, it's, uh, it's been fun collaborating mm. with you, I must say. And with you yes. too. And she's been so insightful, not only just about the English diction that's happening on stage, but also just literally the other day, uh, uh, one of our characters came in wearing a hat and uh, um, Nicola turned to me and said, 
no English gentleman would wear a hat like that. <laughs> I'm like, well, you're right, absolutely. <laughs> um, but the uh, the other guest, actually, that Nicholas spoke of was Andrew Bizantz, who is our maestro and who's been down in the pit, working very hard. It's one of the things I love about stage directing, that I don't have to wave my hands during the performances. I can sit out <laughs> in the audience yes. and, um, and really enjoy the show. Um, exactly. Whereas Andrew is working very hard, but doing a brilliant yes. job. Um, yes. Andrew comes to us from uh, productions at the Florida Grand Opera, the Boston Lyric Opera, and is also the music director of Eugene Opera. And uh, it's been such a pleasure to have um, both Nicola and Andrew here, um, just on a personal uh, note, uh, because we we go way back to our Glimmerglass Opera days, mm -hmm. but also to work with the students and teach them uh, things I cannot teach them, and also to bring a sort of a professional level and professional um, a demand mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. And I, I really appreciate that, and I'm so happy you've been here. And it's very unusual, usually, in this situation to find uh, such a partnership, I have to say. Oh, well. A wonderful symbiosis. Well, we can't wait for you to come back. Thank and you. And goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>